Hello and welcome to instruction 1.5 for experiment 1. Um, in the following videos, you will see I'll often refer to either CMY282 or CMY382. The reason is the videos I take here are from other courses that I also present at the university, but they cover an aspect called Mendeley or a reference manager, essentially. And um, I cover these because you haven't had the, these courses while I presented them, I thought it a good idea to add this for your, for your benefit. So then you can also um, see them or learn how to use Mendeley and learn how to see them. So it will take you step by step how to download it, how to add references to it, how to use it, etc. So just follow it through um, and just bear with it. So take it as that it's not presented for the CMY385 course because I thought it's superfluous to re-record those lecture videos um, because essentially it, I start skipping over steps if I re-record things which I don't think is a good idea because then you miss out on an educational experience. Um, so just bear with it but I think this will be extremely valuable for you and I hope you use it. If you do not use it, it is completely up to you. Then you can reference by hand. There is a table in your practical guide that gives you an indication of how to reference by hand. Um, but of course, if you get to say 400 references in a master's dissertation or in a PhD thesis, then referencing by hand is really not advised. So this is hopefully something you will use in future and um, that will develop you as a scientist even more. Okay, so I hope you enjoy these videos. Okay, so in this video we'll look at instruction 8.2 and that is essentially how to download Mendeley and then just install it and then just to ensure that you have the add in for your for Word. Um, so in your practical menu you'll see there is a link and when you hover over it it is a clickable link. So that should take you to a page that looks like this and it should say download for Windows Click on that, that will download a .exe file. And after it's downloaded, once you click on that, then you can run or follow the prompts on that um, install file or execution file, and then you can install Mendeley from that. Um, and of course, then just ensure that you have at the end, you tick the box that says you want a desktop icon um, for that. Of course, there are different managers for Mac OS, um, and this is the one uh, for Windows that I downloaded because I have a Windows system. Um, if you struggle with Mendeley, you can also use something called Zotero um, that sometimes works easier for Mac. This part, of the Mendeley part, is not um, compulsory. This is just a referencing manager that I use and which I would like to introduce you to. So it's not compulsory to use. If you do not feel comfortable using it or completely do not understand how to use it, you can also just continue on like normal. Okay, right. So once you've installed it, you should have something on your desktop that looks like a bunch of atoms in an M fashion, or connected in an M fashion, and it says Mendeley. Right, and in the um, you can then add references, which will, I will show later on how you can add references to that. But for now, the most important part is ensure that you have everything closed, um, especially just essentially Word closed. That's the most important part, it needs to be closed. And underneath Tools, so you'll have nothing here. And then you go click on Tools, and you will have something that says here, Install MS Word Plugin. So click on that, follow the prompts, and then they that will follow, you. it will allow you to download a bunch of things there. Once you've done that complete, you can open your Word, you can open Word, and underneath in your ribbon, so this top part here in Word is called a ribbon, we'll go over a few aspects of that sort shortly, then you can go to the References tab, and you should have something that says Mendeley Sites Omatic. And the nice thing about this is after You've um, added this. There, can, there will also be a Mendeley site, and sometimes there's something here to the right. If you click on Mendeley site, you see it pops up here to the right, and there's all sorts of things. Um, essentially, you want this. 
for this, you can use either one. Um, but I like to use this one. You can play around with this. This is a this is free. You can use you can experiment uh, with it. If you struggle to connect your computer with it or your whatever, don't worry about it. Just move on. Um, and how this works is once you've added the reference, which we'll do later. Let's say you have something here and you just want to insert, you just want to insert some sort of reference to it. You can add a reference and then you can insert a bibliography as simple as that. And you see now I've added a reference and you can add multiple references. So let's say you add another one and another one and another one. There we go. And oop, all your references are in the correct style. You never have to worry about it again. You don't have to stress. And you see all the DUIs. This is, for example, the one um, I use. Um, <clears throat> but you'll use the REC method, which we'll get to later. Okay. Um, if you should be able to use the Mendeley website to answer most of your questions, I'm not really a technical manager. If you have this, there is some support, if you struggle, you can contact. Um, other options that there are, if you struggle to install Mendeley for Word, sometimes what I've found is if you quickly log out of your UP um, email, uh, if, of your UP account, and then install it, and then re-log in, for some reason that works. Um, you can play around with things like that. Um, there are, it does, UP does give you some difficulties sometimes with these kinds of things. Okay. Okay, so now that we've installed our plugin for Word, of our Mendeley plugin for Word, we want to look at specific citation styles. So again, open up your Mendeley desktop, or if it's still open, you just need to go to, so go to File, Edit, View. So we want to click on the View and click on Citation Style. Then in the Citation Style, we need to go to More Styles, Get More Styles, and search for Royal Society of Chemistry. Okay, and then two options should remain. One that says with titles and one that just says that. So both of yours will still be uninstalled. It does not come directly with Mendeley. Mine is already installed. That's why it says there. But if you click on Royal Society of Chemistry, it should say install. You simply click that and then all it's installed. You say done. And you go to view, citation style. Then it should pop up there and you're just going to select it. Then just to double check that it is in fact installed, you can open up a Word document, go to references again, and look at style and it will say Royal Society of Chemistry. There it is perfectly great for you to be using. Okay, in the next videos we will cover how to add citations and then we can start referencing. Cool. I'll see you in the next video. Okay. So in this video, we would, I want to look at how to obtain the specific citation for a reference that you've now found. And now you might not be sure exactly what that means. But what that essentially means is once you've obtained an article that you would like to reference, there is a citation connected with that article, which essentially means that's, let's say, for example, we take our article from earlier, which we got for our meta dichlorobenzene. And we just quickly go and find it again. So we searched something on Google Scholar, we went through and we've got UP Access, we logged in, look at Link Resolver, went through the whole hoo ha again. And now we have it. If we go down here to something, there's always some sort of citation button somewhere located um, on the page. Then there would be an option for you that says BibTeX, EndNote, sometimes it just says Reference Manager, RefWorp, and then there is an RIS file. Now this RIS or RIS file is what you're looking for. So go ahead and download that. And it will say something, or it will name it as something. You don't really have to worry about what it's named as. The next step is you want to open your Mendeley. Because essentially that thing that you've just downloaded it contains all the information about your reference that you would like. So, 
Here is that RRS file that we just downloaded. So you go to download, you take that file, and you drag and drop it. Alternatively, you can go file and then say import and then res and you're going to import um, from wherever uh, you want it to go. Okay. So now you see I dragged and dropped and there it copied all the information for me from there. It's, and that is essentially what I wanted to show you. So that is what is now, now the citation is linked in your Mendeley. So now you've taken that article, so this article, and you've downloaded its citation and you've added it to your Mendeley library. Now if you take, um, I'll get to the type in a moment, but now if you take the title of this article, and you go to a word file, so this is your, um, your practical manual, so I'll just work with that. You insert your citation, you paste it there, you see it is there, and you just need to add a citation. You see it will add the citation there for you. Okay, now just to finish off what was here, you almost need to make sure ensure that you choose the correct type of um, document it is. So this is not, a, this, it shows working paper, um, but this is a journal article. So then Mendeley is going to choose the correct type of information to extract from that RIS file in there. You can also add the file or information manually. So if you go file, enter entry manually, then you can choose something and you can enter things by hand if you struggle to do, if you struggle to find the RIS file. So you can look up all the information here and you can enter it by hand, step by step. And then you add it to Mendeley, and then you can put it in your Word file. Okay, so that's essentially downloading a, your citation file and then importing it to your Mendeley file. All right, so welcome back. Um, in this video, I wanted to look at specifically the supporting information and perhaps the supporting information of another large publishing house. Um, we've looked at Royal Society of Chemistry, and now I want to look at the American Chemical Society, just so to get a feeling for some of the big, the big publishing houses in the field of chemistry. And um, just what in general, where to find supporting information and how to evaluate an article's website uh, when you get to it. So I just have a random article that I'm looking here for. You don't have to worry too much. And um, let's just go to this publication or this uh, publishing house. So you can see this is from the American Chemical Society. And um, again, here they now have an option so that you can directly cite to Mendeley. So you can directly add to Mendeley, you can use that. Or again, you can download your RIS file um, just by a click of a button, say citation, you've downloaded the RIS file, you can add it again as previous. Um, but if you want the supporting information, they call it supporting information, the RSC called it supplementary information, all exactly mean the same thing. I mean, it's quite straightforward what it is. Click there and it will take you down to somewhere there. And you will notice that I don't have access here at the moment to this article. The reason is I'm not logged in, but yet I'm able to access the supporting information. And that is, in general, you don't, need to be, you don't need to be logged in to access the supporting information. This is an interesting fact about, um, so about articles or research in general. And the reason the supporting information is of some decent value for you is everything the author some doesn't or isn't allowed to put in the article. Remember, authors are sometimes limited to 10 or 15 or 12 or whatever pages in the actual article. So they can't always elaborate on specific aspects in there. Um, those things that they can't put in there, they then put in here. And that is why the supporting information sometimes holds some key aspects that you might be interested in. So that might be additional graphs, some additional figures that will give you a lot of extra information um, on, to understand the main article. And some actually, they, sometimes they give you some quite in, uh, beautiful figures or ideas how to draw your own figures um, from that. So that's the use of the supporting information and where to find it. You can also, if you're on the page and you're struggling to find it because you don't really know where to click, remember if you say Control F on your keyboard and you start, start typing SIP, 
and you see you can actually you're searching on a web page so then you see there it highlights there it highlights for you supporting information and you can jump down to all the places it says supporting see there as i click here on the little arrows the orange moves up and down so you can search on uh, on any site you can do it on anything of course but i mean um, for those of you who might not have ever seen that, um, they can easily find whatever you're looking for on a specific page or even a PDF. And yeah, that's it's true. You don't have to worry about SIF files. For now, PDFs, just worry about that. You don't know what a SIF file is. Probably won't ever know what a SIF file is until you do, unless you do an honors in chemistry. And essentially, that is what I wanted to show in this video. Okay. Thank you for watching. It's going to be our last video on the referencing and using Mendeley to reference because we've set up everything that we need to know. I've shown you how to get all the types of documentation, how to incorporate different references. So now you have some sort of thing that you've written, right? And you want to reference an article. Now you go to references in Word, you go to your plugin, you say insert citation. Let's see what's there. You search, uh, the last thing we searched for was the late free mixed tin and Germanian perovskites for photovoltaic application. You just click on it. You say, okay. And remember, you check that your style has been correctly set to Royal Society of Chemistry. And let's just put, and we can now insert a bibliography, which will be done as whatever you set the style there. Let's say, for example, I use my master style. You see it's immediately updated in the way that uh, you want to have it. You can also use, let's see, Vancouver should be something different. And you see the in-text citation differs from what we have here. But of course, 382, we're going to use Royal Society of Chemistry. So it's that. You can also have multiple references at one point. So when, when you're here, you basically highlight so highlight that reference you see it's no longer going to say insert citation it becomes edit citation now i can edit the citation so you have you 2017 so let's add let's say something random what we what we're going to search for uh, uh, of i have a lot of references so you can need to add more references of course then you can search for different things and I want to add that reference, and I want to add another one. I want to add that reference, and let's just say, for the fun of it, I want to add that reference. Okay. Now you're going to see it changes from one to four, so it has four references there, and all four all of a sudden in our bibliography, well, actually reference list. Remember, bibliography is technically the American term for a reference list, and a bibliography in the UK English actually refers to a group or a list of things that you've read to write something. So, for example, my whole bookcase is my bibliography, but I'm only going to reference two of the books because there's specific things I cite from them. So this is how you do the citation using Mendeley. And as you can see, it's quite easy. It's quite straightforward. It removes a lot of headaches and you don't have to worry about your consistency. So let me just put off the paragraph marks. So you can see there's a full stop at the end of each of the references. The things that need to be bolded are bolded. The things that need to have dashes between text and dashes between them have that. The things that need to be ita italicized are italicized. And you don't need to worry about that. And that is the beauty of using software to do monotonous work for you. Um, so it just eases your load in terms of referencing. So just go through if you struggle with anything go through the videos again i'm quite sure we've covered everything that you need to know um of course uh, perhaps just the last thing that we need to do is let's say we want to add another reference there and let's have the same reference as somewhere in the text so that's then going to become number one and then you see it's still there from one to four mendeley will keep track of what needs to go where but it's referenced correctly According to the RCS method, which is the one you're going to use this year for 3A2. Um, yeah, then just some checks and balances that you always need to check. Like I said, just make sure of the author names, 
then the journal are the journal is in italics the date then the volume is in bold page numbers as a text and dash so i hope some of you have been able to realize what's the difference between that oops let's say h h and h h you see the one is much larger than the other one and that is basically the difference that's actually a bond and that is just a normal dash but here it uses a texan dash you see the longer bond or the longer dash length which just needs to be uh, cons consistently used so if you're going to do the references by hand just make sure that you are consistent otherwise you can use mendeley to take away all your pain and as i said i would advise you to start using mendeley as early as possible because if you're going to be interested in doing a master's or phd or any subsequent research then mendeley will just help you once you get over 100 references and things need to repeat and repeat and repeat it just becomes easier for example let's say you want to fix something in mendeley and you forget it's 17 times throughout your thesis there's this mistake you have to fix it 17 times but in mendeley if you fix it in this app you change whatever you would like to fix let's say for example um, so this reference here this number two is the one that i have open at the moment here in mendeley let's say i change that to issue 20 because that was a mistake that happened i just have to go back to my to my word document i say here at the references tab i say refresh i don't know why that's not going to change anything we want to change 139 my apologies 145 we're too deep in this video for me to re-record and then you see it automatically updates to 145 and it's not something that you will have to remember it's just something that happens automatically if you use the referencing software okay so the next videos are going to talk about word and how you can become as skilled as myself and how you can make nice and beautiful things like your practical manual um yeah but for now i think this is a good time to take a break so please take a break drink some water and continue on with this once you're ready to go on all right